morning everyone. Welcome to Treyer Wilderness. We are going to talk today about harvesting wild game meats and also um, what to do when you're weary. My name is Tammy Treyer. You can find myself and my family at treyerwilderness.com and treyerwildernessacademy.com. My family and I live a life of uh, self-reliance. Good morning, Teresa. And uh, we concentrate on being able to do a uh, majority of things for ourselves, but we rely on God. Good morning, Rachel, my dear friend. Um, we live 100% off-grid with solar power. And um, like I said, our, our lives are faith-led lives. And we really enjoy sharing what we do here on our homestead as well as the knowledge we have because we feel that everybody should be living a form of a self-reliant lifestyle uh, so that we're prepared and prepared for anything that comes our way. Good morning Tammy. So glad to have you guys joining me. We've made some changes again uh, in the homestead. Um, I, I'll shuffle things around here so you can see. Bear with me here a second. You can see the kettle on my wood stove. The kettle there is, and thank you, Terry, um, is actually from an audience member. They mailed that to us from Canada and felt that it would be very suitable for our homestead. And it is, it has been sitting in my kitchen on, a, on one of my cupboards, but now that the wood stove is going on a regular basis, it's nice to have some moisture in the air. So I have put it to use and I'm really excited. So I'm gonna, Spin things around here and show you some of the changes we've made. So bear with me a second here. Yeah, here we go. Hang on to your seats as I move it all around. Okay, so if you guys recall, our wood stove was in the corner where Copper is standing. And I'm sorry, that's Bowser. Copper's right there. She's usually right in front of the wood stove. But where the black chair is is where our wood stove was. The guys moved that this weekend and we will be putting stone all the way from the roof line down behind the wood stove and the wall over here that looks like a rustic cabin will also follow over here and around and underneath the window there and match up with the stone so it's going to look really nice in here it's very cozy uh, we had a very very chilly morning this morning and yesterday was pretty cold too um, but it's just the house is cozy a new beam is in place um, it has temporary lights on either side of the beam up here I can't get my finger where I want it to <laughs> and that will then have little lights I'm gonna walk you over this way there's Eugene and uh, we'll have lights like those right there on either side of the beam. So it's it's coming together. Thank you, Tammy. So let me walk you back over here and hope that I don't make you guys all dizzy. I think I was moving a little too fast. Probably made you all seasick or motion sick. Okay, now I'm gonna spin this and you're gonna be really close to me. Ah, oh, okay. So things are happening and we're getting things in place. So that's a really good feeling. And I just love our cozy home since I downsized and got rid of all the unnecessary. It's even more cozy. Uh, there's no clutter. Um, it's just comfortable and it's really, really nice. So I encourage you guys, you know, if you feel that you need to downsize and just declutter things, definitely take that on because it adds a whole level of inspiration into your life and creativity that I can't even put into words. And just the cozy factor and, and the less weights on your shoulders is just amazing. So, and I just love having my, my remaining treasures, you know, just comforting and, and making the house really comfortable. It's just a very huge comfort spot right now. So I'm real excited about that. So what are you guys drinking today? I have got a chamomile, Paul D'Arco, and lavender tea going on. And uh, I'm, oh, I switch back and forth throughout the season, but this time of year, soups and teas and your warm comfort foods certainly play a role. And I will be baking bread. I have it sponging right now while I'm chatting with you guys. Good morning, Leah. And uh, 
We'll be making a chocolate cake for the guys. They are out working today. We were out hunting yesterday, so that's why I was not on. Um, we had a great day out. We did not see anything um, other than when we were in the vehicle going back and forth to our hunting spots. So that's just how it goes. Water right now, that's good, Tammy, because I need to drink more of that. I need to have you, like, nudging me all day long to make sure I'm drinking more of my water and not my herbal coffee and my teas. But um, we did have a fantastic day. Uh, how many of you get out and hunt uh, during the hunting season? I know Tammy said that her husband and sons get out. Um, this is something our whole family does. So we were all heading in different directions yesterday, and the mountain man and I were together, and we left here at like quarter to five, got out to our hunting spot at about um, 5.30, and sat down on a felled tree, and in front of me was just this vastness of stars. It was the most amazing thing, and I knew I couldn't capture it on a camera, so I was just taking it in. Let me see here. Good to see you too, Leah. And Rachel says, Law, I'm not able to be quiet in the woods. <laughs> That's all right. It's a skill that has to be mastered. Trust me. I, Tammy says she needs that nudging also for water. Yes, if you guys are not drinking water, make sure that you start drinking more water because dehydration is a nasty, nasty thing and it causes your body to do nasty, nasty things and also just makes it run very inefficient. So, um, but yes, it was just, it was beautiful. It was just such a vast open sky. There's no lights hindering our stars out here and it was just amazing and I felt good we were sitting there for a little while and all of a sudden I just got this splitting headache that was just running up and through here and as if somebody all of a sudden sat on my head and I got really nauseous and and he was making fun of me some because I was yawning all of a sudden it just came over me and I, when that happens like that I need to lay flat so where we were there really wasn't much option other than pushing him off the log and laying flat on the log and I was trying to just breathe through it and the yawning was helping because it was getting more oxygen into my lungs but uh, it didn't pass so we had gotten up then somebody had come through and kind of ruined and tainted our spot there was a mountainside over from us that we were glassing and somebody went running through there with a four-wheeler so we decided to get up and walk and that was my saving grace I felt much better when I was walking but when we got in the truck then uh, ending our morning hunt I instantly fell asleep, and on the short ride home, I just ended up frozen. I mean, frozen so much that it hurt, and it, I wasn't cold when it was cold, so it was just really weird. Something definitely came through my system. I don't know if I was around mold. I don't know what happened, but I ended up napping yesterday and trying to warm up. I w laid down at like 11.30 and got back up at 3.30 and still was frozen like a popsicle, so I soaked in a hot tub and that helped some. I warmed up, but I still had such a weird feeling in my head. So today is better. I woke up not having that weird feeling, but it's returning. So I don't know what's going through my body, but sickness and struggles can definitely cause you to be weary. And we'll talk about that then. But hunting is something that I really treasure. I've hunted for a long time. My dad introduced me to hunting when I was young and then um, I got back involved with hunting after my kids were born and got to take the mountain boy out. And Rachel, when you said about not being quiet in the woods, you made me think of Austin because I told the mountain boy when we first went out that he needed to walk like an Indian, you know, and creep and be very quiet. And and it was really funny because that's exactly what he looked like. If you can picture Elmer Fudd hunting in the woods and being wary, wary, quiet, that's what it looked like. <laughs> so teaching kids to be in the outdoors is a really fun thing. And it's also very rewarding because it's really neat when they are able to um, shoot their first animals. Uh, the mountain boy shot his first buck out here. And uh, he had shot his turkey previously, um, but he had really enjoys hunting. Uh, he didn't see anything yesterday either, but he and I are going to get out this afternoon. And hopefully the guys will make it back in time from their job today to get out this afternoon too. The reason we hunt also is, and the main reason we hunt, and yes, we have some trophies on the wall, um, but they're more not for the antlers or, you know, it, it, there's memories based on those animals. Um, hunting, uh, Glenn hunting with his father, uh, hunting with his buddy, and um, your, your first animal is always a very neat experience. And uh, 
But our main hunting isn't for the trophy. It's for the meat for our freezer because that's what we live off of. Uh, like I said, we live a subsistent lifestyle and a self-reliant lifestyle where we try to gather as much as we can from the wild and do as much as we can for ourselves. So we not only shoot the animal, but we butcher the animal. We use the antlers for craft. We use the hide for craft or for shoes and clothing. Um, we use the bones for tools sometimes. And uh, we use everything from the animal. We don't only just eat the prime meats. We eat the heart and the liver, the tongue. And I know to some that may sound really gross, but until you try it, it's some of the most amazing meat. A meal of heart is very, very good for you. And it's also extremely tasty. Uh, we also eat the neck of the animal. So when I walked past Eugene that hangs in my kitchen, you can see how huge their neck is. It's enormous. So out of an elk, you'll get like anywhere from five to six roasts out of the neck. And on a wood stove in the wintertime, there is nothing better than that great smell going through your home and that delicious meal at the end of the day. We like to cook our meats slow and um, you know, so a long, long period of time on low heat, and you will not have a better game meat. A lot of people cook game meats incorrectly, and then they taste gamey or uh, tough, and they lose their taste for it very quickly. But there is definitely a method to cooking wild game meats, and once you cook them right, you will be so amazed at how tasty they are. So if you don't hunt, I encourage you to learn, not necessarily, f you know, um, for the hunt and or even to fill your freezer but so that you have the skill because if there was anything to ever happen and we were to rely on our own skills to feed our family this is one of the biggest ways you can forage from the wild but during the winter months there's not a whole lot to forage and there's not a lot to live off of and unless you forage really good during the summer months and the spring months and so forth you're not going to have a whole lot to rely on in the winter months. So being able to harvest your own meats is a really, really important skill, knowing how to butcher them and do it properly so that you aren't contaminating the meats with their feces and, and also getting that bacteria in your meats that will also in turn infect you. So it's really important that you know those skills. Um, on our YouTube channel, we have a lot of videos of us harvesting meats and butchering and... Um, field dressing the animal and there's different variations of getting the animal out of the woods you can quarter it or you can uh, gut it and bring the whole thing out so there's different means of being able to do things and again it also is going to depend on where you are if you're at the top of a mountain ridge you're not going to want to necessarily bring the entire elk out a deer you could manage but an elk is a massive animal massive <laughs> and so you're going to have to quarter it and, and remove it depending where you're at. Sometimes the animals are way down in and you have to use a winch to get them up. Um, it's a lot of work sometimes depending where you're hunting and what your um, options are. But it's also free meat. It's also the best non-GMO, grass-fed, non-hormone meat you will find. And again, it's really tasty. I was spoiled by elk when I met the mountain man because he had some elk from some of his hunt trips he used to guide out in Wyoming so he had it some in the freezer and had shared it with me but until he got his moose um, I was spoiled by elk but moose meat is just amazing so I have officially been spoiled by moose and now elk is my second favorite but still to have that in your freezer and to know that you can um, go out there and harvest it and take care of it and process it and and also learning how to shoot and how to handle the guns we talked about homestead guns a couple weeks ago and knowing how to utilize your, your rifles and your guns for killing larger animals is really important. Knowing how to shoot them, how to clean them, and, and being uh, very safe with your firearms is really important. Uh, there's a lot of people covering our area of the woods out here, and it, to me, can be very dangerous at times. It's a little nerving that there's that many people uh, I don't know why, but they tend to flock to our area. So it's important that you also are dressed properly and wearing right, the right clothing, wearing orange, so that you're not mistaken because there are a lot of people who don't use gun safety and um, don't identify what they're shooting at first, which is one of the most important things you should be doing is not only identifying what you're shooting, but knowing that you're going to shoot to kill. So you're aiming for spots on the animal that you know will kill them and, and not 
leave them suffering or running into the woods and running off on you and and there's a whole wasted animal off dying on its own and it's just really it's, it's sad that's not the way you want to hunt so you want to know what you're doing and if you don't have people to show you we will have videos and classes coming on to the Treyer Wilderness Academy before too long that you can take part in and learn how to do this but it's something that I feel everybody should know even if you start out with a squirrel and learn how to uh, kill a squirrel and and butcher a squirrel and you may crinkle your nose but that's good eating too we have different squirrels than the East Coast uh, your squirrels on the East Coast are much larger and um, better to eat there are two squirrels out here there's a pine squirrel and then there's a ground squirrels the ground squirrels carry the plague, so that's not something that we shoot to eat, um, but we do shoot the pine squirrels and um, tree squirrels, and they're little and don't have near the flavor as the ones back east, so you do have some advantages for you eastern folks out there. Um, but starting small is okay and learning, learning how to uh, go from there. And then as we progress into our season, another form of getting meat for us is trapping. And again, we utilize all of the animal. We use the hide. We use the meat. When, when the mountain man gets a beaver in one of his traps, we eat the beaver meat. We use the hide. We use the tail. Um, he uses the glands. We use a, all of the animal. So it's not something that we're just out there for pleasure. We, we exist off of these animals. And also, you got to keep in mind that when you have an abundance of animals, disease sets in. And therefore... The meat goes to waste and um, disease sets in and travels through from one animal to the other. So it's a means of responsibly keeping the population um, under control and also being able to feed yourself. Good morning, Becky. So I just, I feel it's something very important. Do any of you guys hunt? I know Becky just popped on here. I know Becky's family hunts. Um... But if you don't know, you can also connect with local people that hunt. Uh, your fishing game is uh, a great place to start. They have classes every year to teach you how to hunt and trap. And um, most states require the hunter safety classes anymore, which I think is great because people need to know all the rules behind hunting and um, good hunting practices. You know, wearing orange is important. When you're out hunting turkeys, you don't want to wear red or blue. Like some people like to wear bandanas around their necks or have bandanas on them, or they might have a red um, turtleneck on. To another hunter, that could look like a turkey because the turkey's beard is red, their necks are bluish purple. So um, it's really important to be careful when you're out hunting and also that you are not um, being mistaken for an animal because like I said, not everybody identifies at what they're shooting at, which is very wrong, but it is a truth. Yes, I know you guys are hunters there. I don't know when your season opens. I've been gone too long, but ours opened yesterday. So we were talking about harvesting game meats and uh, being able to not only harvest but butcher and take care so that you can feed your family. Now, one of the other things I wanted to talk about today is um, when we get weary. Our guys are anxious waiting for rifle season to start. When does your season open, Tammy? Yes, we were rather anxious. It's exciting. I love being out this time of year. It is just such a beautiful, beautiful time. And we have had such an amazing fall this year. Unlike back east, we are surrounded by tall timbers. Archery already started. Rifle starts first Monday after Thanksgiving, Becky said. Okay, awesome. I love archery. I have not gotten out for archery um, for the last couple years. I need to get my arm back strengthened up and ready to go so that I can get out and do archery again. But my bow is sitting and waiting for me. <laughs> we also have long bows. That's something that we all enjoy doing is getting out for archery. But I was going to say, I'm sorry, the mountain boy just came in. Yes? We're out of borrow there. Okay. I got to go to town. So let me finish my video okay. and I'll get that then. Okay. I'm going to have to wait until you get back because I don't have... That's fine. Just go chop. Really any Okay, just go chop. That's fine. Switch your switch your efforts. Okay, thank you. I'll check and in we with. We need to get some more gas. Yes, I'll check in with you when I come out. We need to get um regular gas and 
cast healing. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Just all right. The guys used it up. Let me get back on here. Time. Okay. Let me get back on here and I'll check in with you before I go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, I believe it starts the beginning of November, Tammy said. Okay. Yeah, it's an exciting time. Uh, we really look forward to it. Uh, we were down to four meals of meat last week, and a dear friend of ours gifted us with some of his deer and elk meat from last year. He came on Saturday with a tote full of meat for us, so it was quite, quite a blessing. And... Uh, super dear friends and God has been blessing us and showing his love to us through so many different people it's just been very amazing and we are so extremely grateful for that um, what I was saying too is out here we are surrounded by tall timbers so things don't get very colorful um, right directly around us and there is a um, tamarack tree or a larch and uh, it is a pine, however, its uh, nettles turn bright yellow, so you'll see them to start changing through the mountain range, and it looks really pretty. The yellow is like a fluorescent yellow. It's very bright, very brilliant, and very pretty. But um, this year, what was really unique is all the ground brush, all the underbrush, um, just changed color so brilliantly this year and you could just see it changing daily and it just looks so pretty we do have one cottonwood in the yard too which turns yellow but we don't have anything that really turns the reds till you get into town where people have planted the fire bushes and and red maples and things but out here in the wilderness itself you don't have the hardwoods like back east so you don't have the maples or the oaks and the trees changing colors like that so it just was a really really pretty fall typically we get a month of rain and we kind of lose that uh, brilliance and the prettiness of the colors. But I think because it was so dry and, and then it got cold, we had the pretty colors this year. So I was real excited. Oh, that's awesome, Tammy. I'm so glad to hear that. Tammy said she had a friend do the same thing. That is just such, a, uh, such an amazing feeling and such a humbling feeling, too. You know, um, we were really humbled when we were gifted uh, during the period of my surgery. And that was one of the really biggest times that we've been gifted and we're always the giver so it was a really hard thing to accept everybody gifting us so much it was a weird feeling yet it was also something that we are supposed to do we are supposed to give but also receive because when we don't receive we are cutting someone else's gift short so just always remember that even though it's very humbling it's something that we're required to do and and you know when we're weary, one of the greatest things we can do is uh, be a light to others. And it is truthfully what we are called to do. In Ecclesiastes 11, it talks about that. And um, men, many of you might know Starry Hilder. She has become a dear friend of mine. She and I have been running parallel with uh, life journeys over the last three years. I had my surgery, and shortly after my surgery, she had her biking accident and broke her neck and her back and has been healing ever since also. And as of late, she is walking through a very big storm. And it's just neat to see and neat to have friends in your life that are leaning on God. And although they weaken too, their resolve and their strength and their faith is still intact. And it's just a really strong and very powerful statement. And it was really, um, it's been really neat to see how although our journeys are very different right now, our walk is much the same. Our, our spiritual walk is much the same. And I have mentioned it in the last video that I've been just feeling very tired and worn and weary has become a new word. And um, the mountain man has been too. We have not lost our faith. We are not worrying. Um, we're just tired. We're just really, really tired. And... Um, I know we're not alone, no matter what circumstances or journeys we are walking through, and no matter how long they are, they get very tiring, and they get hard, and they get uncomfortable, and you know, sometimes that's part of the lesson, but I received a really neat eight-minute voice text message from Starry Hilder on Saturday, and I couldn't figure out how to listen to it. Um, it came through one app, but that app didn't allow me to play it, and every time I tried to open it, it wouldn't allow me to play it, and finally I got onto another piece of equipment and was able to access it. So I listened to it on uh, Monday, and it was just so amazing to me to hear how similar 
our feelings have been. And it's just really awesome also to know that, you know, you're not alone. That's important. And that's why I think it's really important for us as a family to be sharing our walk uh, because if God is working miracles in your life and he's working them so visibly and so strongly and you're not sharing them with anybody, you're, you're not sharing his glory and his grace and his mercy with others. And, and that in turn could in, empower and enable someone else to be able to get a stronghold and uh, continue in their journey. And, and really, guys, that's what we are called to do. Without a test, there's no testimony. And there are things that I have mentioned before that happened during my um, surgery and my illness, and I wasn't being very transparent then, and I wish I had been because that transparency would have shined. And I'm sharing things after the fact, but I really feel that when we share things, when they're going on, we share our hearts, we share... The realities we share the the nitty gritty and 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 it it's just something that is really strong and can really be seen and is important to share so remember that yourselves if you're personally walking through something and you've got a testimony don't don't keep it to yourself share it and and even if you share it with one person that one person may share it with somebody else it's a it's a ripple effect because what Starry shared with me the other day empowered me and helped me grab my bootstraps and just helped me get my head on straight. I was just so tired. And it was just really neat to um, know that how that was going to ripple because I knew that I would share that with you guys. And guys, it's really important to have an arsenal of Bible verses at our ready so that we can pull into them and lean into them and, and gather the strength because the word of God is very powerful. And that is where Starry gets her strength. And that is where I get my strength. And it was really funny because she was said she was just feeling so numb and she wasn't gaining from her Bible readings, although it doesn't happen all the time to me or to her. But sometimes there's mornings where you get in there and no matter how hard you try to absorb something, it's just not going in. I know that we're not the only ones, right? You guys experience that too. The these and the thous have always killed me, so I use the New Living Translation um, and am able to absorb things so much clearer. Uh, but it's really been funny. Um, Starry mentioned Ecclesiastes 11, and another friend of mine mentioned that it, I need to get into Ecclesiastes and read. And she even mentioned another very good godly friend of mine, Vicki, shared that, you know, sometimes it just is like having to beat your head to try to get stuff in there. So the other day she read it while she listened to it being read to her. And, you know, sometimes we just got to do what it takes to get ourselves right. And, and sometimes our mental state is a, a result of the enemy knowing that we're weak and just trying to beat us up and pull us down. And, and that's always, more than anything, the case. But we're going to get tired, and we're going to get weary, and we're going to get weak. And the thing is, guys, if we pull into the Bible and constantly make it a, a point of our day to read God's Word, we will be less likely to be weary. And, and even as we are weary and we're tired and we may not know what direction to go in, God will show us through the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you know, we don't hear that. And I think that's why we get weary. And that's because we're not pulling in enough. We are supposed to be giving 100%. So if you're not giving 100% but you're looking for answers, you're not going to get them. You need to pull in 100%. And... Some of the Bible verses I'll share with you that uh, really resonated to me the last couple of days are Galatians 6, 9. So we must not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Giving up is easy, guys. We can all give up and throw in the towel, walk away, and move on and do something else, right? Good morning, Holly. But we gain so much by staying in it and, and pulling into it and walking the journey out because that's where we learn. That's where we are being taught. And if you notice that you are going through similar journeys on a pretty regular basis, maybe it's because you're skipping out early or you're putting trust in yourself over God or you're not getting the lesson that's trying to be taught. And that happens to all of us. 
And it's not that God is an evil person and he's putting us through torture. It's that he's building us. I find it very um, humbling and just amazing that God feels enough of me that he wants to continue growing me into a better person, um, a better light to others. You know, that's powerful to me. And yes, it does make me tired. And yes, some days I just want to curl up in my bed and not get up. It's easier. But I don't do that. Although yesterday was nice taking a nap and soaking, I will admit it did. That break was good. So it's important to take those breaks, which I share with you often. But it's also important to stay in the storm. Stay in the storm and let God mold you. You know, we are, he is the potter and we are the clay. And the more we let him mold us, the more we can be a benefit to him and the more we can help others. And honestly, guys, of all the things that are available to me in life, that is one that just really um, makes me giddy and, and makes me happy to know that I can be a help and a light to others because I want to be and I see other people doing it for me. And it's an amazing thing. Think about how you feel when somebody gifts you. And when somebody is there to give you the hug when you need it most, you know, you know how that feels. So if you're going through a storm and you're hiding in your storm and you're not loving on other people, think about how you're neglecting them from feeling that feeling. I'm not meaning to call anybody out on anything today. I'm speaking to myself too, because there are times when I'm tired and I'm worn and I'm weary and I don't want to leave my homestead. So I'm, I'm talking to myself too. So keep that in mind. All of the, the uh, Bible verses I'm going to read are down below. Copy and paste them. Put them in an Evernote. If you don't have Evernote, go to treyerwilderness.com Treyer slash Evernote. It's a great app, and it is at your ready all the time, and I record things like this in it. That's actually what I'm reading from. All right, Psalms 40, 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry for help. He brought me up from a desolate pit out of the muddy clay and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. So there, that kind of covers what I've been saying. I mean, he will. He will pull us out of the muck and the mire and the journey and the storm when it's time. He hears us. He hears our prayers. He hears our cries. He is not ignoring us. He's sending people our way. He's sending books our way. He's sending scripture our way. He's sending movies our way. You know, there's so much that we can gain from through our journey if we keep our eyes open and see how God is using things to enrich our lives and to take us from where we are to the next level so that we can keep climbing out of that muck and mire. It's just if we're willing to see that. I just see God using so many things. And I, I thought it was funny. I found, <laughs> I didn't feel good yesterday. And I hate getting caught sometimes. But on the way out of the, um, where we were sitting initially when we were hunting and I started not feeling good, on the way out of there, I found a heart-shaped rock. So I quickly picked it up, didn't skip a beat, kept walking and was, you know, casually trying to stick it in my pocket and he turned around and asked if I was okay and I'm like yeah I'm fine <laughs> and just kept going I didn't you know tell him what I was doing and then um we had split up to see if we could cover more territory yesterday when we were walking and when he got back to the truck there was a heart-shaped rock sitting on on the uh, console for me that he had found and then I kind of chuckled and told him what I was doing when he asked if I was okay the reason I share that is those heart-shaped rocks are the things that um scream out to me that God is present, that God is there, that God is showing me that things are going to be okay. They might be ugly, they might be rough, but they're going to be okay. And I just feel it's so important. I know that I talk about this a lot. I know that I've been talking a lot about our journey, but I feel that everybody has a journey. Every day we go through things that can cause us to be sad, that can hurt us, that can, there's so much, there's so much going on in our world. Even just watching the news in the morning can you know, reduce you to tears or anger for that matter. That's why we haven't had a TV for 11 years. So it's just day to day. Every day is a challenge. Every day is a challenge to be strong. Every day is a challenge to make sure we're doing the right thing, that we're doing godly things, that we are choosing goodness over judging, that we are choosing happiness over sadness. You know, we, we have abilities to choose and it's important that we choose. And these are some things that I choose to do, and that's why I feel 
it's important to share because I know daily everybody has a struggle, whether it's a, a one-day thing or whether it's a constant storm. You know, life can be difficult. Uh, yes, amen to no TV. Uh, yes, I don't miss it, not even a little. We watch uh, Pure Flix movies and we watch uh, Amazon Prime movies on occasion, but no TV. We find our news where we want to find it, the good sources, and, you know, it's just safer that way. It's so much better. There's not a whole lot of quality on there because when we do get out and see what's on there, it's not a whole lot of quality, nor are the advertisements. Anyway, the other one is Psalms 34.8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the man who takes refuge in him. As I said last week, I don't know where we would be if we didn't have our trust and faith in God. And you know, people may look at us and think, oh my goodness, they're such Bible thumpers. They're putting their faith in God to get them out of this circumstance. It's so grim and they're just nuts. They could be doing things for themselves. We do do things for ourselves. But we wait to be led to do things for ourselves because we could make quick and, and fast decisions on things and things that would um, make us comfortable. But it's not necessarily the things that are going to get us out of this spot. And it's not necessarily the things that are the right things to do in this situation. So by putting our faith and trust in God, and that's a personal choice, and, and people may say we're crazy, but, but by being transparent, I know that God will shine through. And he will. He will. We will come out of the storm. We will be stronger. And uh, hopefully our lights will be brighter. And uh, I, I believe that God will shine. And God's miracles and mercies and grace will shine through. Another one is, The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Psalms 28.7 so the book that I mentioned to you guys last week was uh, Chase the Lion, and I do highly recommend that. Rachel recommended it to Mountain Ben, and Mountain Ben recommended it to us. I've listened to it two times already. It's an amazing, amazing book. And there's another one I'm going to be sharing with you next week. Good morning, Jeremiah. Good to have you joining me. Um, there's another book that I am going to be sharing next week that Starry shared with me. I am in the process of reading it. I did not record anything on that today, but I um, figured that would make for a good lesson next week. So I will be sharing that with you. And that's the other thing, guys. If you read things that nurture you and help you while you're going through the storm, those are things that need to be shared too. There's so many powerful tools out there, and that's just it. We all have skills and talents and, and God uses those to help others, and that's the purpose of many of these authors, too, is the brilliance of what they have shared and written from their hearts that God has given them, you know. So everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. Don't neglect using yours, and don't neglect um, being a light to others by sharing what has helped you. And, you know, I listened to uh, Amy Porterfield's podcast. She does a lot on social media and stuff, but she and another very... Um, big uh, person in social media shared a podcast on depression and it was a very big step for both of them because depression is one of those things that people don't talk a lot about and something else that a lot of people don't talk about is what happens going through the storms and and how we weaken you know we many of us don't want to share our weaknesses because it makes us look weak but at the same time when you share your weaknesses you show people that you're real and you also show people that through that weakness, look how strong you've become. And I thought it was really a, an amazing podcast for those two ladies to share how depression debilitated them in their lives as children, in their lives as young adults, and in their business life. And these two women are extremely successful, making a lot of money with the businesses they've created, but they're helping others. And how powerful of a way to help others by talking about something that most people are afraid to talk about. And again, I didn't view them as being weak. I viewed them as being very transparent and very strong to have the courage to share that with somebody and not just one person, but they've got huge audiences. So just keep that in mind. You know, don't be afraid to share um, your weaknesses and also what you've used to uh, overcome those weaknesses because that's one thing that I refuse to allow to happen. I am, I am a fighter. I am a warrior. I will tire. I may be weary, but I'm going to pull into God and I am not going to quit and I'm going to continue the fight. So again, Galatians 6, 9. So we must not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. 
How many of you guys have gone through storms and have ended up in really amazing places because you were willing to walk the storm? It's pretty amazing. You know, I look back in my life and there's not one thing I regret happening because I can see how God used those circumstances to make me who I am today. And some of them were grim. Some of them were rough. Some of them were um, in the corner rocking, you know, really feeling lost, yet I came out the other side. And I know that whatever you guys are going through, that God will do the same for you. All you need to do is trust him and pull into him and read his word. There's so much truth in it. And um, it's, it's amazing stuff. Awesome, Tammy. Thanks for sharing that. Tammy says we have. And, and you know something else, guys? When you can walk through valleys like we are with your spouse, and you pull into God and you pull into each other and you seek God together, you will be incredibly amazed at the strength that your marriage takes on. Because that's something else that neither one of us are going to ever give up on. And that, that is something else that neither one of us are, go are going to allow to weaken. And what has been really amazing is the strength that has come from this walk and my illness and everything else. It's just amazing how God uses things to build and strengthen. And we have to be willing to see that and be willing to, to, uh, be willing to walk it. I know it's hard. I know that the journeys are hard, financial, marriage, um, deaths, there's so, uh, illnesses. Um, there's so many things that can, can really make life difficult. But if you're willing to walk through those things and you're willing to, Try to strengthen yourself through those struggles and um, keep the faith. You'll be amazed at where you end up on the other side. And, and it's just neat knowing that God's using each of us. So I hope that empowers you today in your walk and in whatever it is that you have to uh, go through today and tomorrow and the next day. And guys, I'm going to be back on next Wednesday. That's the game plan. But next Wednesday is the last day of our cow season. And last year, I got my cow the last 10 minutes of the season. So, if we don't fill our tags before next Wednesday, there's a chance I may not be on, but I will do the next day again. So, just keep that in mind. I will try to uh, put a post out just reminding you. So, we're shooting for next Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Time. Otherwise, I will jump on when I can and um, continue this. And after next week, everything will go back to norm normal. I really greatly enjoy doing our 1030 every Wednesday. And I ask you guys to share it with your friends. If you are gaining from this and gaining knowledge and um, inspiration, help on your walk, please share this with your friends. And... Uh, let them know that it's out there for them too. I really enjoy getting to know you guys and to talk with you guys. Uh, I feel like you guys are not only friends but family and we have so many new people joining us every week. We had a woman from Denmark uh, joining us a couple weeks ago. We have a lot of people from the UK. So it's really awesome and I really feel that God is using our journey and our platform as a means of us to be a light and uh, I hope it's enough for him. I keep striving to be more, and I just thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedules to join me and to be here. So, guys, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for us all. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this time. Thank you for everyone taking time out of their busy schedules to be here. Lord, I just ask you to use the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us to strengthen us and to keep us from getting weary, to guide us on our journeys and make sure we're making the right choices. And Lord, just to know that you're present, to feel your love, and Lord, just guide everybody and, and help everybody, because I know everybody's going through journeys and storms of sorts. Each day brings challenges, and sometimes we don't have the mind to see the positive in those challenges, and I just thank you for giving me that ability that although things can be really rough and I want to cry, you, you show me the the beautiful stars that you've created in front of me while I'm out hunting and you show me a heart when I need it most or you send a friend to give me a hug. Lord, I just ask that the same would be there for everyone watching and all of our audience. And Lord, I just ask that you help those that are dealing with illness, help them to be well, help them to pull into you. And Lord, just uh, strengthen and guide and protect and keep everyone safe and healthy 
in their day-to-day -day walk. And Lord, I just thank you for more than anything what you're going to do in our lives and who you're going to use in our lives and, and just the plan you have for each of us. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in my life today. So I ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Oh, good morning, Angela. Glad to have you joining me from Oregon. So nice. The thing is, guys, I can't always see all of your messages show up. I'll go off and all of a sudden there's like 30 messages and I only remember seeing parts of them. So if I don't respond to you when I'm live, it's because yours may not have shown up on my screen, but I will message you after the fact and, and let you know that I'm just as grateful that you were there and that I didn't get to say something to you live. So I thank you all for being there, being out here, being a support to us while we walk through this journey. And, and just uh, being good friends. And, and I wish you guys the best. I wish you the best day, the best week. And for those of you that are getting ready to hunt, I wish you a successful uh, bounty and harvest. And uh, I did jump on on Saturday, so I'm going to start trying to jump on periodically while I'm doing things. I am making bread today, but I need to get that made and a cake made for the guys and then do some errands. Um, but I am going to be making some charcoal lavender soap. And I did hot sauce on Saturday that I shared. So if you missed that video, you can jump back and look through. And for those of you that are new to the videos, the archives are all out there. So when you have spare time and you're washing dishes, play one. Um, and I hope they're as inspiring to you as the podcast and the things that I listen to when I'm doing my dishes. Because I try to use my senseless time doing something that's going to empower me and, and to feed me. And if you aren't familiar with Starry Hilder, you can find her on YouTube. She's got a really powerful channel. She's a very godly woman and shares some really awesome stuff. And uh, she's also a homesteader uh, and off-gridder. She is in an apartment right now, so she's showing the process um, of living that life in an apartment. Um, but it doesn't matter. Homesteading and uh, self-reliant lifestyle can be done anywhere. And I think it's also a heart thing. You know, wanting to live better and prepare and to provide for our families, that's just, that's just seems normal to me. So um, you don't have to be qualified as a prepper or a homesteader or any of that to do what we're doing. Just do it. And um, thank you guys and God bless you too, Tammy. And guys, I wish you a great week. Thank you again for joining me. And if you ever need anything in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. And if you need prayers, you don't have to tell me what they are. You don't have to give me details. Just let me know that you need prayers, and you can do that right below here in the comments. And majority of the people following me right now will pray for you too. Um, I might even say all of them. I don't know everyone, but the ones I do know are my powerful prayer warriors, and they pray their hearts out. So, guys, take care. Have a very blessed day, and God bless you all. Love you.